Imagine this animated scenario. Two flasks appear on screen. One flask is labelled molar concentration, the other molar concentration. In the molar concentration flask, a kilogram of water comes to life, followed by a mole of sugar flying in and dissolving into it. The flask then lights up with the number 1, denoting 1 molar. Cut to the molar concentration flask, a litre of water springs to life, followed by another mole of sugar swooping in and mixing into it. This flask too lights up with the number 1, signifying 1 molar. So as the animation beautifully illustrates, while they might sound similar, molal and molar concentrations are distinct entities. But what makes this difference so crucial in physical pharmacy? Well, molal concentration remains constant, irrespective of temperature or pressure changes. That's because it's based on the mass of the solvent, which doesn't change with variations in temperature or pressure. This makes molal concentration a reliable pal in fields like pharmaceutical formulation and drug development, where consistency is key. Molar concentration, however, can be a bit of a wild card. Since it relies on the volume of the solution, which can change with temperature and pressure fluctuations, molar concentration can vary under different conditions. This characteristic makes it a bit trickier to work with in areas where precision is paramount. In a nutshell, understanding the differences between molal and molar concentrations and their significance in physical pharmacy can provide a solid foundation for grasping more complex pharmaceutical concepts. It's not just about knowing definitions, it's about understanding how these concepts impact the real-world applications in the field of pharmacy. So, remember molal and molar might sound alike, but in the world of pharmacy, they play distinctly different roles. And with that, we've demystified the often confusing concepts of molal and molar concentrations. Remember, in the world of physical pharmacy, every mole counts, whether it's in a kilogram of solvent or a liter of solution. So, the next time you encounter these terms, you'll know exactly what they mean and why they matter.